Hello, this is David Fate, a sophomore student studying mechanical engineering at Johns Hopkins University. And this is my MVD lab dissection video. Today I will be dissecting the Proctor Silex Chopmaster Food Chopper 72500. So this is a food chopper that my mom bought in the late 90s in the US. She told me she bought it for about 15 to 20 bucks. I speculate this product to have been manufactured in the same time period, I'd say about 96 or 97, um, right before my mom bought it because this product is a steady seller. As of right now, this exact food chopper is being sold on the Proctor Salix website. And if there was that constant demand back in the day as well, they would have kept manufacturing this product to keep up with the demand. As the product name suggests, this food chopper chops up food. You press this button, the motor inside will rotate clockwise, the blades that are connected to the motor will rotate as well, chopping the food up for you. Now, before we get into any serious dissection, I wanted to do a quick mention of the safety aspects of this device. An honorary mention would be the polarized plugs. If you look closely, you will see that these two prongs are shaped differently for electric safety. Another safety aspect example would be the bumps on the grooves of the cap and the bowl. If you look closely, this is the edge of the lid and there is a very thin long bump where the pencil is pointing at. That bump on the lid meshes with this bump on the bowl to create a secure fit between the two when the lid is closed. Same thing goes for the connection between the bowl and the device. This bump on the bowl will fit into this slanted groove on the device so that they're locked securely and then the bowl doesn't move around and the device is turned on. And last but not least, they used rubber at the bottom of the device to increase friction between the device and the floor. Now I'll start the dissection process. I'll start with the top because that's easier. So this is the plastic lid that's likely to be manufactured with injection molding because of these two circular traces of excess material that had to be removed when this lid was removed from the mold. In fact, I'd say most of the plastic parts of this device have been injection molded because this device is on the cheaper side and injection molding is known for its low costs in mass manufacturing. These are the two blades of different heights attached to this hollow cylinder that connects to the protruded part of the bowl and to the motor. This is the bowl, and that's it for the top. Now to the bottom, first we'll need to remove these rubber elements because there are screws hidden under them. Here comes the bottom plate. So this is the inside of the bottom plate. And as you see, you can see these circular sections all over the place. And I think these are also evidence for injection molding. Now, this is what you see when you remove the bottom plate. As you see, there's a gear train here. There's a smaller gear under this middle gear. And these gears all mesh pretty nicely. But before we get into the gears in specific, I remove these two screws from here and here first to see what this is. Looks like this is just a piece of plastic, injection molded plastic probably, to hold the cable in place. Okay, so now the gears. I numbered each gear for convenience. Number one is the smallest one, number two is the middle one, number three is the one behind number two, and then number four is the biggest one. So unfortunately, the only gears that are removable are numbers two and three, like that. This is not gear number three. Um, number one isn't removable because it's firmly attached to the motor underneath this cover. Number four isn't removable because this is firmly attached to this washer. And then this washer is connected to the metal rod that connects to the blade like that. And so because of the fact that this gear and this metal rod are inseparable, I figured it's impossible to lift this cover up and check the motor underneath. 
So that's pretty unfortunate, but I guess it is what it is and we'll look through other stuff. So looking at individual gears, gear one has 13 teeth, gear two has 72, gear three has 47, gear four has 90. So that results in a gear ratio of 10.6, which means that gear four, which is connected to the blade, will transmit a torque that's 10.6 times the torque that's given by the motor, which is connected to gear one. And by this point, I think all of you guys can guess what I'm going to say about how this gear was manufactured. Yes, injection molding because of all these circular traces of excess material. The last thing I'll talk about in this video is um, how the load is transferred between a driving gear and a driven gear in this particular setup. So this is a relationship between two gears, right? One's a driving gear and one's driven. And so this would represent the relationship between gears one and two and gears three and four. The direction of the force exerted between two meshing gears is always determined by the pressure angle, which is a property of a gear. And this pressure angle creates this pressure line and along this pressure line acts these forces. So let's look at the driven gear. So we know that the driving gear is rotating clockwise. So the driven gear will rotate counterclockwise. Since this torque, the resisting torque, resists the counterclockwise rotation, the resisting torque will be clockwise. In response to the resisting torque, there will be a force transmitted from the driving gear to the driven gear along the pressure angle in this direction. So that's F23 right here, pushing the gear in this direction. But since the gear isn't going anywhere, there should be an opposite force that's pushing the gear in the opposite direction, which is FB3 here acting on the center of the driven gear. So things are going to work pretty similarly for the driving gear. There will be an equal but opposite force of F32 acting along the pressure line from the driven gear to the driving gear. And in response to this F32, there will be another force acting on the center of the driving gear right here. The last thing to talk about here is if you look at the equal and opposite forces between the driven gear and the driving gear, there is this radial component that's acting toward the center of each gear, which means that one gear is trying to push another gear away from each other in this direction. So in this video, I was able to successfully dissect a food chopper and analyze it. Um, thank you to Dr. Mara who gave me this opportunity to make a YouTube style video. First time was a lot of fun. And um, I hope this was helpful for anybody out there who was wondering how food chocolates work. So, peace.